Hello, oh hi, hola, let's get to it. Certainly by now you've downloaded Infinite Painter and had some fun exploring a really exciting feature. When you start something new, it's not a canvas, it is in fact a pattern. And the patterns are better for my work when they're square, because you could use these for 3D textures. Just pretend 967 is a standard. And <laughs> I'm right now using a wet paper for a watercolor brush, I believe. Yeah, there it is. And I activated that by clicking on the paintbrush. I can hide that by tapping the upper left. So a pattern, what exactly does a pattern do? A pattern does this, of course, and repeats the pattern. And you have kind of a safe area. So why don't we just cover really quickly what that means? I'm going to expose the top tool shelf, which can be docked anywhere. Tap once on the layer, again in the same spot, and it clears the layer. So it looks like double tapping on that layer will clear the layer. That's not actually true, but it kind of looks that way. So this is the actual canvas that will get repeated. You should contain your drawing inside this square. Okay, eyeball, eyeball, smiley face, right? There's his big old nose. And it looks as though you could do the drawing outside of the square, like here. But what that's really doing is drawing it here inside the square. So our best technique, you know, our best practice is going to be drawing inside the square. When we pinch to zoom outward, it shows us over and over and over and over what it looks like repeated. And is it a strong repetition or a weak repetition? It's up to you to decide. I can tap tap to zoom in. And the reason I can do that is because under settings, I have in my gestures settings, fits green for double tap. So that's pretty easy. Double tap and there it fits. Okay, let's begin. What are we gonna do? Well, first of all, we're gonna explore some of the brush options. For this, I think I want a pen. I think I want a soft pen. I think I want a pen that's nice and soft and maybe slanted. I don't know, what's that look like? Oh, looks like graffiti and that's pretty cool, but it's not what I want today. And today I wanna to do something kind of fun, but I want that soft pen. Where's that soft pen? Where's that soft pen? There's a soft pen. I can click on that and if it isn't to my liking, like if things have changed and it's this and that and all sorts of other things are different about it, what I can do is click on that pen, click on the options and reset, reset that pen to the way it was when I purchased Infinite Painter. And uh, I did that yesterday, so that's why this first line looks exactly like it was reset. You like drawing faces? I like drawing faces. So I want to teach you very quickly how to draw some fun faces. From the front, something that's about two squares tall. Inside that square, and I'm using two fingers, spreading and turning, I have space for an eye, space for an eyebrow, and I can put in a little eye and a little eye. He's looking a little bit to the side. Halfway down this square, I can do a triangle that represents the nose. And then I'm going to sort of indicate where that chin is. I know the cheek is there, the cheek is there. From the chin to the cheek, there's going to be a line. And this is sort of skinny people, the line comes in. Heavier people, the line goes out. It's not the bone, but it's where the skin gets pulled across the cheek and the chin. And now I can go ahead and rough in the bone, which is going to run up the jawline to behind the cheekbone near the ear, which I'm just going to do like this. Very simple. I'm going to do a little line that represents the beginning of the hairline that comes over those eyebrows. And now there's a distance from the brow to the nose. That distance is roughly the same to the hairline. So I'm doing it right now. And I'm going to do that to connect those. My original two squares on top of each other more or less give me an idea of where the cranium or even where the hairline is. And this guy is just going to get some big hair. Real simple. Nothing too complicated about that. There we go. I just gave him a mullet. Whoops. I like to leave the mouth open because look, here's always a little teeny sad mouth. All right. Well, that's valid. You know, oh, look at that. Well, he's, he's, he's got something on his mind. He's kind of happy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so leaving it blank because that mouth is powerful, powerful. What happens if we try again? but maybe 
we'll do some different features. So I'll just sort of reconnect with the method, put that line halfway, do something here, do the triangle here, come up with a smaller chin this time. Now I got a little tiny chin. I remember I'm connecting the chin to the cheekbones and there's a space here. I'm not connecting all the way over. I'm connecting close, but not quite because this is soft tissue connection. This is not a bone connection. Hey, you want a bone connection? There it is. We got a real crazy angle here. This is definitely a, definitely an artist type with a real cerebral high forehead there. Doing that, ooh, that's not gonna make me happy. So now these ears are a little closer to the head. Love that undo button right there, right there. Just perfect. Can't get that on a piece of paper. Now, those eyes, I didn't do anything with the eyes. What is it? Uh, what's good eyes? What's good eyes? Uh, yeah, just a real casual, yeah, just kind of looking that way. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. Is it a female or a male? I can't tell. It's kind of male-ish right now. Let's do a little, I don't know. I'm having a hard time making things feminine lately. I don't know. Let's just play with this hair out like that. There we go. Suddenly it's still not really a male or female. One other detail is we could probably just sort of fold those eyebrows down a little bit at the ends. So it looks like maybe there's a chance they kind of wrap around the head like that. This is not anatomically correct, you understand. <laughs> as long as we both understand it, that's pretty cool. So now I'm interested in another version. Look how easy this is. When you're creating heads, you can just go ahead and do this. What's happening in my imagination is I am finding five circles up here and basically dedicating circle two and circle four to eyebrows. And you could make them wide apart or you could keep them close together. And beneath those, somewhere above that little carrot pointed down of a nose, this is sort of like the cheek line, the blush line that you see in cartoons. And then there's some eyes. There's some eyes like that. And I'm not doing anything more complicated than just a couple of simple turns. I'm going to go with a thicker chin and I'm going to go with a rounder connection for the bones and the jawline. Now this automatically looks like a younger person. So where's that distance between the nose and the brow? Let's not overthink it. There's a line up there. Now before, I'd be marking a little line here and then going up to it. What if this time, well now it's feminine, darn it. Okay, let's leave it feminine. But we can't have those big long ears. That's just kind of weird. So I'm gonna do some ears like this to give myself an idea of where things should be there. Now I do like a little bun, a little bun up here. Now I've crossed my original square, as you can see. And that's gonna be important later. Oh, that's, that's great, that's great. I don't know, she has bangs or what? If she had bangs, it'd go a little bit like this. I do a 3D channel, so my 2D is perhaps a little weird. If you're a 2D artist, and you're still watching. Be gentle. Here we go. Another couple of squares, one on top of the other. Another couple of eyebrows. Another couple of eyes. Very gentle, very straight, and maybe a little tiny pull at the ends of the eyes there. This is a, a kind of a tired, maybe a dubious person. His nose a little higher than we've been doing. Because remember what I told you, a good rule of thumb was to put it about halfway down. And that is a good rule of thumb, perhaps a good rule of nose. But this one being a little bit higher gives this person already a, a kind of a weird frog look. Like this, this could be frog man. There's his chin. There's that little quiet line, which you could use if you were shading the planes of the face. But I'm going to do, what am I going to do? I think I'll do kind of a heavy line like this. That's good enough because maybe I'll go over that later. And uh, oh, I said I wanted to go straight through. The last one I didn't go straight through because I ended up with such a great hairline. So there's that distance. I'll go ahead and mimic that distance, but I'm just going to do a big 
arc right up here. Did that work? No. I'll try it again. Undo button to the rescue. That's good enough. It's hideous. But you know what? No, this is already weird. So let's just keep it weird. That, uh, round ears. Why not some round ears? It's so easy, man. You see the face in there, right? Uh, parted hair. Parted hair is easy. Get a little carrot. Go down. Come on down. And it's a hat. It's a hair and it's a hat. Good. <laughs> hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There we go. I don't know. It sure does look like something. That's fantastic. Okay. Now we have four. Oh, it's small. I didn't know how small it was. Jeez, I've been zooming in. The point is, tap, tap, we're doing this. When we're doing this, we have a chance to change things around. And one way you can change things around is you can click the protractor up here and edit. And then when you're inside the edit menus, you can draw a lasso around what you want to change. And I did not plan on this, but I'm going to change by transforming that guy. And what I'm going to do is use this tool to make him roughly the same size as all the others. Three of them are pointed the same way. So maybe what I'll do is point him this way. And by clicking and dragging outside of that little selection, I can go ahead and move him magically. The problem of magic moving is that if I go way, way, way too far under pattern, it disappears. So it's better if I just move it magically like this. So I can keep him like that and then click the check mark to accept what I want to accept up there. I'm going to do that one more time. So it is the protractor. It is the lasso. It is committing where that lasso goes, transforming to say what should happen to it. And because her head goes over that line, I'm now stuck. This tool has cut the top of her bun off. So I told you, stay inside that box. Can't change her. This is uh, just something that I'm going to have to erase and draw in later. So I warned you, stay inside. Now, now you know. Now you know why I warn you. It's a cookie jar. Stay away from it. Now transform. Maybe I didn't tap it well. It happens. Once we get outside of this initial box, we lose access. See if I try to do that same thing again. It picks up the bottom of her bun down here. So stay inside the box for your original drawing and your uh, patterns will be really magnificent. There we go. This is the introduction to pattern. Always worthwhile. I hope you get out there and play around with Infinite Painter. They haven't asked me to do this at all. But the technique of drawing heads and faces is easy, and the power of using pattern on this application is really cool because you could take it as a drawing to other programs, and it'll be fine. And the drawing that you get is just going to be this square right in there. So this gal's head is going to be continued down here. But that's the nature of patterns. If you've never done it before, that might seem strange. If you have done it before, then you certainly appreciate this outside area where it's hard for me to draw on. But that outside area that gives you an idea of how your pattern will progress throughout the image. That's all I got. I appreciate your likes and subscriptions and look forward to doing more two-dimensional and three-dimensional videos as we move farther along. You can find me around the internet and it's always a delight spending virtual time with you. <laughs> Thanks for watching.